welcome to the topic the interesting topic inflammation the word inflammation inflame mean to set a fire it is something like war going on inside your body so it is a war between the soldiers of our body like your lymphocytes neutrophils macrophages and the weapons used by these cells mainly the chemical mediators of inflammation towards the offending agents like bacteria or their toxin products so inflammation is a dynamic response of a vascularized tissue to the injury remember only vascularized tissues will show inflammatory response for example cornea is the one which is a vascular organ does not show any inflammatory signs and symptoms so inflammation is a dynamic process of vascularized tissue to the injurious process inflammation is a process in which healthy tissue will respond to the injurious stimuli and it is basically a protective phenomena inflammation is meant for protecting a body from the offending agents but it is potentially harmful remember inflammation when it is an excessive in quantity it can prove lethal so it is a potentially harmful pathological process so now can you tell that inflammation is useful or harmful remember at this particular point that inflammation is something like a double edged sword or a double edged knife it helps the body to get rid of the offending agents but meantime it can cause an harm to the body by its adverse effects and adverse reactions then what is the main purpose of having inflammation inside the body the main purpose of inflammation is to destroy and remove the substances which are being recognized as foreign to the body to prevent minor infections from becoming overwhelming and to prepare the damaged tissue for the repair remember the inflammation and repair goes hand in hand the inflammation most of the time it will resolve or it resolve by fibrosis that is healing by fibrosis the pathologist classify the inflammation mainly as acute inflammation and chronic inflammation when you use the word acute inflammation it is of short duration the duration is short and the cells that are involved in the acute inflammatory process are mainly the neutrophils chronic inflammation is the one which is of long duration long term and most of the time the chronic inflammation will heal with the fibrosis whereas acute inflammation usually resolve completely without much complications so chronic inflammation the cells involved are lymphocytes lymphocytes and modified lymphocytes what we call plasma cells are the component of the chronic inflammatory process in both acute and chronic inflammation we have a role of macrophages so macrophages will play important role both in acute inflammation as well as in the chronic inflammation to certain extent eosinophils are also part of acute inflammatory process but eosinophils can also be seen in both the acute as well as chronic inflammation then we call it as acute on chronic inflammatory process the most important cell in the chronic inflammation remember it is the lymphocytes so whenever the pathologist see predominantly the cells inflammatory cells as lymphocytes or a plasma cells he will label the inflammation as chronic inflammatory process whenever pathologist will see predominantly the neutrophils admixed with few macrophages he will label the case as acute inflammatory process but along with that we always take into clinical history into consideration before labeling the cases as acute or chronic so if you see the history of uh, inflammation the classical signs have been described as long as as back as first century itself celsus he described the four cardinal signs of inflammation rubar calar tumor and dolar and the fifth sign of inflammation has been later on added by rudolf virchow whom we consider as father of modern pathology he added the fifth sign of inflammation that is functionality that is nothing but loss of function various scientists have been added uh, a lot of contribution to the field of inflammation metinkoff and paul ehrlich they are the one who described the wbcs and serum factors which are critical as a defensive mechanism against the microbes metinkoff is the one who described the phagocytosis and paul ehrlich his role is immense in the field of microbiology sir thomas levis he is the one who described in detail about the chemical mediators of inflammation so remember the cardinal signs of inflammation what are the cardinal signs of inflammation rubar 
rhubar we refer it for erythema due to the capillary dilatation so whenever you see inflamed area it always appears more of reddish in color so by seeing the color of the skin changes itself you can make out as yes, it is a inflamed area color that is nothing but increased warmthness due to the increased blood flow so whenever you feel the inflamed area you will feel that the temperature of that particular affected inflamed area is increased the tumor that refers to edema don't uh, confuse it for neoplasia the tumor refers to the edema always the inflamed area will be edematous the dolor the pain is the one which brings the patient to the clinic so dolor is the most important cardinal sign of inflammation it is the pain due to the local pressure as well as stimulation of the nerve endings and the bradycanine is the important chemical mediator that causes the pain and finally such an affected area which will show alteration in the function sometimes even total loss of a function so these are the cardinal signs of inflammation so by seeing the color itself sometimes it is possible to differentiate acute inflammatory as well as chronic inflammatory exudates whenever the body cavities are get inflamed so there will be accumulation of the exudative fluid if you see the color itself you can say is it a transudate or exudate when i use the word transudate it is predominantly a chronic inflammatory process containing few of the lymphocytes when i use the word exudate it is predominantly contain the neutrophils containing plenty of neutrophilic debris and high protein content so what is the difference between transudate and exudate so exudate is a inflammatory extracellular fluid it is a high protein content it contains predominantly cellular debris predominantly the neutrophils specific gravity will be very high more than 1.020 it implies significant blood vessel permeability changes so most of the time the exudate refers to the acute inflammatory process whereas transudate is the ultra filtrate of a plasma so it contains very low amount of proteins the specific gravity will be very less and it results in either disturbance in the osmotic pressure or due to the disturbance with the hydrostatic pressure so imbalance between osmotic or hydrostatic imbalance results in the formation of a transudate then what is an edema edema is accumulation of an excessive fluid in the intracellular spaces or interstitial spaces so this edema can also takes place in the serous cavities like our body cavities pericardial cavity pleural cavity and even peritoneal cavity so then we call it as ascites if it is within the peritoneal cavity we call it as hydrothorax or a chylothorax if it is in the uh, thoracic cavity or if it is in the pericardial cavity then depending on the exudate color of exudate we call it as here chylus or a hemorrhagic pericarditis then what is pus the layman word a pus nothing but it is nothing but purulent exudate which is very much rich with the acute inflammatory cells that is neutrophils it also contains dead cells as well as the dead microbes so pus is nothing but rich in cellular debris predominantly containing the neutrophils so with this brief introduction we will see what are the stimuli for inflammation as such any infectious agents like bacterial fungal back viral all those infectious agents can start or elicit the inflammatory process physical trauma or any kind of trauma chemical trauma chemical agents road traffic accidents all those can elicit a inflammatory process so physical agents chemical agents and even radiation can start the inflammatory process the tissue necrosis can itself elicit the inflammatory response from the body foreign bodies which have entered into the body so that can also elicit a granulomatous response foreign body granulomatous response itself is a type of inflammatory response and variety of immune reactions also belong to the inflammation so immune reaction also important to trigger for onset of a inflammatory process so let us see what are the mechanism that are get involved with this inflammatory process the first and foremost thing that will takes place in the inflammation is the vasodilatation vasodilatation refers to alteration in the vascular caliber with the increased blood flow so any inflamed area it shows increased amount of blood at that particular inflamed area it is all because of the increased vascular permeability exudation where microvascular changes will take place there is a leakage of the plasma proteins along with that the cells will also will leak from the intravascular compartment to the extravascular compartment more and more wbcs will accumulate emigration of a cells from intravascular compartment to the extravascular compartment 
then we use the word chemotaxis nothing but accumulation and activation of these wbcs towards the site of the injury the main intention of all these mechanism is to phagocytose the microbe so eating phagocytosis is nothing but eating the microbes to happen all these things the endothelium has to become leaky so how this endothelium becomes leaky in inflammatory process so there are five processes probably mechanisms which have been explained how the endothelium becomes uh, leaky in the inflammatory process probably it is due to the gaps between the endothelial cells so endothelial cells will contract and there will be a formation of gaps wide gaps through which the acute inflammatory cells will migrate or it could be due to the direct injury to the endothelial cells itself or it could be due due to the leukocyte induced damage for example inflammatory cell itself can cause damage to the endothelial cell surface it could be also due to the increased transcytosis or sometimes it could be due to the formation of the new blood vessels new blood vessels that are formed they are very fragile they are very much prone for getting damaged and these newly formed blood vessels are not very stable and they can be very leaky in na their nature so these are the five probable mechanisms how the endothelium becomes leaky so let us see how the vascular events of inflammation will take place